On this one we're asked to find the antiderivative. So what that means is the same thing as integrating this. So I'm going to write this with an integral symbol and rewrite this strategically so we can use the power rule a few times. So the first term is going to stay the same, minus 15, and then we can rewrite the square root as x to the 1 half power. And finally, minus 6, we can move that x squared up to the numerator by using a negative exponent. We're going to be integrating with respect to x. All right, so from here, let's actually find the antiderivative. So the 3 is going to come along. We're going to increase the exponent by 1, so 7 plus 1 makes 8. Then we divide by that new exponent. Minus the 15 comes along. We're going to increase the exponent by 1, so 1 half plus 1, or 1 half plus 2 halves, is 3 halves. And then we want to divide by that new exponent, but because it's a fraction, it's equivalent to multiplying by its reciprocal, so 2 thirds. Minus the 6 comes along. We're going to increase the exponent by 1, so negative 2 plus 1 makes negative 1. And then we divide by that new exponent. For good measure, we put a plus c at the end, indicating uh, any constant could be added to this. All right, so what's the best answer possible? Well, let's clean up just a little bit. I can go ahead and say that 15 is in the numerator, so I can think 15 times 2 makes 30 thirds x to the 3 halves, and then negative 6 divided by negative 1 makes positive 6 x to the negative first plus c. The only other reducing down we may want to do is that negative 30 divided by 3. So final answer here, x, uh, uh, 3 eighths x to the eighth power minus 10 x to the 3 halves power plus 6 x to the negative first power plus c. All right, we can typically leave our answers with fractional exponents or negative exponents, but that's a very good answer what we got to.